Natural Selection and Speciation in Bears A biological species can be defined as a group of organisms that interbreed to produce fertile offspring. The evolutionary process during which a new species is formed is called speciation. As long as members of a population can crossbreed successfully, they are considered part of the same species. In the next slides, we're going to look at the distribution of members of the bear family on different continents and how this distribution might have occurred. In the gene pool, the total number of alleles of all the reproductive individuals of the population might exist, and there can be a free exchange of alleles between these populations. For example, in bears, there might be some that could have hibernated in the original population and some who did not. Some might have had powerful arms and legs with sharp claws, some of the, these claws would have been curved to help them catch fish and most of them would have had an excellent sense of smell to help them find their prey. Others might have had a different colored fur, so brown in some and white in others. The fur could have been used for keeping them warm. They might also have bigger feet with a rough sandpaper paws and maybe they could have had the ability to swim, all part of the original population. When a new species arises from the existing species, the two species will then no longer be able to interbreed because there is no gene flow between them because they were isolated. So after variation, the next step would be isolation of the populations. The isolation can be due to a barrier that divides them or they might still be able to occupy the same area but have different preferences. Here we see the distribution of the current polar bear range, which is shrinking day by day, the historic brown bear range, indicated in red, and the current brown bear range, which is indicated in green. And as can be seen, the brown bear range has definitely shrunk, and along with it, the polar bear range. Polar bears would have had a much wider distribution due to the last ice age that covered most of the northern areas of our planet with a, an ice cap. Over time, as the ice started shrinking, the environment in which the polar bears could have survived also started shrinking. So there used to be a lot more variation within the populations. Then isolation started taking place due to environmental changes. The environment started putting pressure on the individuals. This then led to the process of natural selection taking place. Within natural selection, there are a few steps that commonly takes place. The first one is that they are usually an overproduction and not all of the individuals will survive. There is variations, two or three different alleles, Competition leads to the survival of the fittest, the inheritance of the favored variation, and this leads to genotype and phenotype changes within the larger population. So the population changes when the best variation for the specific environment survive and leads to reproduction. So let's look at the example of the brown bear. Each female can produce two cubs every three years. The original brown bears might have had white and brown fur alleles, like the Kermode bears that exist today. On the dark forest background, the brown fur gives better camouflage. 
The brown bears reproduce more and longer because they are better adapted. And in the long run, there are more brown bears with two of the same alleles for dark brown fur color. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we find the polar bears. Polar bears, the females produce three to four cubs, but only one in three, well, one in three die before they reach adulthood. The original brown bears had white and brown fur like the Kermode bears. On the white ice, the white fur gives better camouflage and prey can't see the hunting bears. The white bears reproduce more and longer because they are better adapted. In the long run, there are more white bears with two of the same white alleles for fur. Other characteristics can be included, such as the rough sandpaper claws for traction or the ability to swim in the water. Furthermore, polar bears do not hibernate, which allows them a longer period of hunting to, for survival. So again, there is variation within the population, within the common gene pool. After isolation, the populations have to go natural selection. Different selection pressures exist for each of the populations. These variations in the traits existed in the original gene pool. The different variations of the traits get passed on from the surviving parent to their offspring. The individuals with the variation of the best suited trait to a specific environment will survive and reproduce. This can cause three possible results. The population can be pushed into a specific direction. There could be a disruption or there could be a stabilization. In the case of the bears, it was a directional selection where either the dark brown bear survived or the light polar bears survived, each in their own environment. The big question now remains, if these two populations mix, can they interbreed? And that has recently been answered. The answer is, yes, they can still interbreed. And therefore, they, can no long, they cannot be considered as two separate species yet. So polar bears and brown bears are still related to one another. If you want to learn more of these interesting facts, just like and share and subscribe and learn as much as you like because I love teaching biology. Also check out these videos that I've already made on some extra information on natural selection. <laughs>